All right, everyone, the time has come where everyone is talking about who the fuck did I marry? I tried to do this before earlier, but it seems as if like it has been eight hours now. So I have the original four hour video on another person's playlist thing. So we're going to get this through this together on who the fuck did I marry? So this is Tessa, Risa Tisa off of TikTok. And we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of who the fuck did I marry? Let's get started. And welcome. By the way, I'm a life coach, spiritual advisor, and a spirit keeper. So I'm going to be putting my two cents on all of uh, these videos, I guess, these compilations, and see if I can help you guys through the mean of spirit keeping. So let's get this started. We all know why you're here. Yeah. You're here for part of the new series that I am calling Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm going to create this playlist series um, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced a real pathological liar. Um, this is my introduction slash disclaimer video. First and foremost, I'm going to be truthful, okay. even if it makes me look bad. I'm going to be honest, but I'm also not going to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. I'm not going to use people's real names because I don't have their permission to do so. And <laughs> the sister does not want any sort of litigation. Um, I will tell you off the top, I have a sense of humor and I have sarcasm. So things that you see me laughing at, none of this is funny. But in order to get through it, I have to laugh. If I cry, I cry. I'm human. I'm a woman. This was traumatic. Right. Um, I, I, understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Upload as much of the story as I can. Um, because I know people get so annoyed with the follow. Hold up. I forgot. How many compilations does she have on this? Like, she just went on a rant. By the way, you're going to see her in the car. Uh, link to me down below in the comment section. Where do you guys think she's going? Part four. Follow me for part 17. I'm just going to do the best I can to keep uploading the videos. What's up, no name? Each at a time. Mark. I'm going to go in order from the time we met until the time I got our divorce decree in the mail. So that is a lot of time to cover. Please give me the grace to just get it out. Um, it may not be all in one day. It may not be all in two days. But what I can tell you is even if you don't necessarily see a video, I'm probably recording it and then I will upload it into the playlist titled, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? <laughs> um, what else do I need to cover ahead of time? Because I feel like this video is important to give some sort of context. So that way when people jump into the series, they kind of can figure out, oh, let me start at the introduction video and then work my way through. Um, a lot of the questions that you all have sent me will be answered when I start and tell the story in order. Um, everything I'm going to tell you can be verified. There are people in my life who can easily verify, yes, this did happen. Yes, he really did do that. Yes, he said that. Um, yes, she did go through that. I have no contact whatsoever with my ex-husband in any way, shape, or form. Um, we do not communicate. We do not have mutual friends or anything but that we're, where we communicate through those people. No contact. I cannot stress that enough because I feel like somebody's going to ask me, do you still talk to him? No. I ain't seen him. I ain't heard from him. I want to hear from him, and I will tell the entire story up until the last time I did hear from him and what happened. Okay. Um, yeah, this is this is my story. So, um, I am just a regular woman who thought she met the one, and I didn't. <laughs> um. Most people have never came in contact with a pathological liar. We 
typically come in contact with, like a compulsive liar. It is not the same. A pathological liar has no reason for why they lie. And the lies that they make up, there's no limit to the lie. Um, I was once a psychology major in undergrad. I didn't graduate with a psychology degree. But I'm very comfortable saying that he was a pathological liar. He was a narcissist. And yes, there yes. was some mental, in my opinion, mental health issues going on. Pathological lying part. I like the fact that she actually covered like both um, scenarios of pathological and chronic. Um, so kudos to her um, with this. I kind of want to see his reaction. I haven't seen any of these videos because I really wanted to record it for you guys on on live stream. So absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to preface all this by saying. You're going to probably think, what in the world? There's no way this happened. Everything you're going to hear me say actually did happen. Oh, yeah. um, I never thought I was going to be in some sort of Lifetime movie. But... <laughs> Lifetime movie? <laughs> I love I love the confidence with that Lifetime movie. Yeah, her series has been uh, apparently incredible. I saw her. I didn't click on the interview, but I saw her with like one um a major head of, of the media and really good journalist um credible credible too pretty pretty much credible and um she looked fabulous so i'm gonna go to those interviews too later down the road but we're gonna get through all this first together i was um so i will read the comments as best i can like I said, I think if you allow me to tell the whole story, things will be answered. Okay. Um, and sorry, I do talk with my hands. It's just... It's a, I do too, sis. Just, I do too. Um, <laughs> other than that, let's all take a deep breath. Buckle in. Because this was a fucking crazy ride. And if you think it's crazy... Imagine how I feel as the person who lived it and had no idea what I was dealing with. I thought I knew, but I truly had no idea who the fuck I married. If you like how I twisted that, anyway. All right, y'all. Um, this is the introduction, so welcome. Part one will be up shortly. Please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the fuck did I marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. This is how I know it's serious, too, when a person is recording on, in their car. Um, not because, like, they have nowhere else to record, but it just gets so realistic and real. Um, I know, guys, like, don't, don't be, like, you know, recording and driving and, 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 and being, um, distracted and everything. However, you know, you kind of get real life reactions uh, when someone talks in the car um kind of like the vulnerability um of it as well you know people tend to go into cars to feel safe and things of that nature to have a private conversation or to record a video and i actually like the setting of cars uh talking in cars it, it just makes it a little bit more personal we met on facebook dating site and we also matched on hinge um, I did not realize that he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the other one was a variation, like a nickname um, that he called himself. Different pictures. So it was a running joke between us. Oh, you ain't even recognize that um, you had matched with me on Hinge. No, I didn't. Um, and also that should have been a red flag. By the way, you will notice in this story, I called it the United Nations of red flags. It is so many red flags that, I mean, you would have thought I was colorblind because I ignored all of them. So, anyway, back to the story. We met around March 4th. We exchanged phone numbers. He called me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time. And the first...
These sounds a lot like my Pathfinders as well. A lot of times, like, the Pathfinders um, would go into dating sites and, you know, find their potential mate and actually um, <coughs> match with them on multiple dating sites. Sorry, my chair is so, like, creaky and so old. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but a lot of Pathfinders, um, Pathfinders take notes too because I'm going to be giving you guys, um, tips and tricks on how to kind of like catch red flags and even before all this happens like before you guys actually go and meet these men and women in anyone in between do your definitions um ask around like you don't really have to be spiritual with uh getting answers from the beyond or even getting answers from beyond um you don't have to even do that. It's just literally common sense at times. Um, usually, if you know someone by mutual friends, ask around, ask some questions, um, and try to do some like psychology conversations with these people who have been with your mate, by the way, or, or potential mate, or a person who um, you think gives out red flags. Uh, sometimes divination can really solidify your, I guess... I guess solidify how your date is going to go or, or how the relationship is going to be. I know that a lot of people in the spirit king community, they do that too. Like they go to their books, they go to their astrology books and they go to an astrologer or they come to the website or they go to creepy hollows or they go to kaiju management to get a divination on love and on another mate. Sometimes with that, like readings don't, uh, won't give you the direct answer because it's already common sense you're clouded your judgment is clouded and perhaps maybe you need someone to give you that psychology conversation or that therapeutic conversation of you know of the symbolic shaking you like waking you up from reality it's like hey there's a lot of red flags tessa or there's a lot of red flags pathfinders you really need to um kind of deal with those types of red flags because if you deal with them meaning deal with them as in stick to the relationship it's gonna get 10 times worse for you for your spiritual path and that's me saying that in my professional background phone call he told me that he had just moved to georgia from california from san diego his job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia. No, I won't say the name. Okay. And so we also talked mm -hmm. about his childhood. He told me um, he grew up in Philly. He's from Philly. Both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta. Um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half-brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So, I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we okay. had. So, we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, mm -hmm. I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this, and he just thought that was like, wow, you know. So, you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained... Oh my God, red flag number one, if, if he, he thinks that's cool um, too. To um, yeah, that is pretty cool that you work, you know, with, with law enforcement and things of that nature. A lot of guys actually get threatened and that's why they lie to females because they think that the female has a better position than they do, right? So a lot of times, as what I exhibit in my Pathfinders, a person can be... Let's say um, uh, one of the ma uh, one of the significant others, the one that is a pathfinder, um, is a designer um, or is a uh, Etsy person, like like homemaker and things of that nature. Um, and with that homemaking comes hobbies, and usually um, with the hobbies, sometimes like the ladies, like okay, well, or potentially like all the ladies or anyone in between. Um, would sell these type of hobby craft items on Etsy and you know their significant other usually their husband sees that they're making all this success 
more than what he's making. And sometimes they're making into like five figures and six figures in sales because they're getting successful. And a lot of times men feel threatened by female careers. So I just want to let you guys know that and females just doing the damn thing or any feminine energy doing the damn thing. So that's a red flag too. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs. But I don't know anything <laughs> about arena football. So I don't know anything. To me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple. Is arena football like you know like like football. like you go into like your local like you know like stadium center or like performance center, right? And then you play football. Like I'm thinking about like fant like 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 fetish football, like girls in like booty shorts and like cami tank tops, you know, the voluptuous ones playing football or playing basketball. But is that like an exhibition or like a, a like like or something like that? Like what is this arena football? I keep on hearing this because people kept on talking about arena football because of this video. So in the comment section below, what is arena football? I'm not gonna be googling that because I. Kansas City Chiefs. Woo. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So he told me, you know, I just, I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing, be and they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying, right now I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house, ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, I, I really would like to move out there. And so I thought, you know, this is, that's great. You know, if you're looking to get a house, you just moved here. He was like, I don't really know too, too many people here because I spend all my time at work and, you know, this job is really demanding. Yeah. So that was our first phone call. We talked more. He talked a lot, which took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me. Um, he eventually asked me out on a date. Our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said, Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically, we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. I was excited. Like, I called my friends and was like, I got a date, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully, he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully, he looks like his pictures. So, on my way to our date, I took 285. And literally, right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit from Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said, hey, I am so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station. And I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel right. in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused, he got quiet, and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are, drop your pen. So I dropped the pen, and he came to the gas station. Came to the gas station, got out the car, okay. and I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures, that I was like, oh my god, he's actually a attractive. Because he's like 6'4", okay. 6'5". Six, Okay. Also, man, I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced, um, and that his ex-wife they had she had um, 
two children, a boy and a girl who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about 20. And he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids. Um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him um, out of in course. California. And so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. Did she, did I remember her stating everything to you from before that he had like, he was with relationships with people with other children as like um, partners with other children as well? See, I have been telling a lot of my Pathfinders, the single Pathfinders, uh, when we had the Pathfinder program, um, a lot of men, a lot of people, not just men, a lot of females too, tend to go towards people who already um, established lives and already have a product of their own which is children and i don't know i don't there's there's like this like primitive thing or perhaps maybe uh there's like a psychology with this and whoever's a psychology major or knows a lot about psychology leave it in the comment section below um, but I have a lot of psychology friend, uh, psychologist friends, uh, when I was working for the government as a government contractor, they are, um, but they weren't in like what I was like working at. We were just like Starbucks buddy and cafe buddies. And, um, a lot of times when they tell me that a lot of these mates, potential mates look for that kind of thing, it's because they think that you are successful. Well, she got a product of her own, which is her her children or a, a child or children I need to be a part of this because it seems as if I need to do this off of necessity luxury whatever it may be because someone already mated with this person that I have interest with so perhaps maybe I can have the same product that she already created or if it's not um, having children the the whole point of that is having more power or having the guy think that you have more power by your employment status right she was working at the state troopers um she was working with state troopers and law enforcement so in his eyes in his head something ticked and be like okay i have to wife up this girl i have to be with this girl mock my words he's going to be seeing a lot of things that he has like humble i call it humble luxuries when you heal something that is a luxury that you never had when you were growing up um i noticed that a lot of people i know for me growing up i didn't have a dishwasher and then when we had a dish when we, when we got into a home that had a dishwasher that was a luxury for me because it kind of killed time, like like everyday necessity luxuries, right? So some people, luxury is a Keurig machine or even a coffee machine for that matter. Um, in this case, like men or, or people look for that type of things, like, or that type of personality where they already made a product of their own or they already have something established. And that's always a red flag. Um, a lot of times, like the dancers and the girls would come to me, and they uh, and they have children. Uh, some of them have children, and their their clients, I guess, I guess, uh, wanted to mate with them because I guess they told them that they had children. And the more that a dancer like tells out, uh, kind of like exploits uh, exploits their lives, the more problematic that their job is going to be. So then I always had to diffuse things and be like, okay, well, don't tell him about your private life. Embellish on, on, on something um, that can protect you because sometimes these men or these females or these people, these type of personalities are preying on, on these different uh, personalities that they think that are higher echelon than their own. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so... You know, he was like, there's no, I, I can't stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. So, this to is bite you in the ass. Again, no, I'm kidding. The first conversation was, we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, okay. you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. He changes my tire, which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he <laughs> says, hey, I found a, play, a 
tire place around the corner, you need to get another tire. Like, you can't drive on the... Side note, off topic, um, well, no, she brought it up. There is something sexy with a masculine male changing attire. I don't know what it is. It's just really attractive um, to see men hard at work or men, like, even mowing the lawn. Yeah, it, that just, it just sets my rocks off. Donut. So, he followed me to... Um, he followed me to the to the tire place. Okay. And then helped me get a tire, paid for it. So I was definitely like, wow. Woo! Um, Pathfinders. So, okay. So a lot of the Pathfinders do uh, go through the stage of like wooing and um, people trying to like impress you by flaunting money or paying because that's going to solidify their relationship with you, right? It's like, okay, well, she has all this, or whatever. How about I pay for the tire? Um, subliminally, not like 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 talking, but this is not factual. But I feel as if this is his personality. Oh, I need to show her what a mural man does. I'm gonna pay for this fucking wheel because I want her. I bet you your bottom dollar she is in a better place than he is. And I'm, I can't wait for her to list her common luxuries, modern common luxuries that he doesn't have. I don't know why I feel like it's going there. I was good. So anyway, I get the, car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. Over the perimeter. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just... this. Oh my God! I had butterflies. That that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. Right. So I had butterflies. Okay. And um, we go in. There's a long wait, and so we sit outside and we just talk, and the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for. He tells me, you know. He was like, I want to get married and it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away. And I want that. I want marriage, Aww. family, a house. Like, that is what I want. He was like, I'm, you know, I'm as a man, I'm ready to get married, but I want it to be for real because the first time, you know, mm -hmm. it really hurt me when she cheated on me. So he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so he was like, what is it that you want? And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we Aww. both put on the table that we wanted marriage. And this is the end of part one. All right. Who the fuck did I marry? Okay, so solidifying everything on the first day may be beneficial for a lot of people, but also it could be very either traumatic or just too much on the table at one date, right? I know that a lot of people want to just like, you know, don't want to do the short talk. They want to get, you know, into like they just want to get into the relationship because they're just they just want to be with you. Um, for something, your looks, your personality, your status, whatever it may be, because that can be beneficial for your potential mate as well. There's nothing wrong with marrying in benefits as well, because you see that you're attracted to the other person, you like what they're doing, you think that, especially for feminine and female people who, you know, want to be the, um, a little bit of a homemaker or a stay-at-home wife or stay-at-home person, um, they kind of like a lot of those uh, a lot of the pathfinders look for that type of man or that type of mate who can financially support them now in the plus in the reverse side too men actually do look at you know if a girl has good credit too because entering in a relationship a man doesn't want to know that you have horrible credit you know what i mean because now he has to fend for him and fend for you which is fine which is fine for a relationship which is fine for a marriage but however however um, fending, if you have too much on your plate, 
and you feel as if you can't help out the, your partner or your family, then you really have to assess the situation and know that there is a problem with whatever relationship that you're in or starting out to be um, in that relationship, right? In the spiritual side of things, when I talk to the Pathfinder, it's always a, a, a whole conversation, like this one topic on a date where they think that they're solidifying a relationship when in actuality, you don't even want that. You just want to be on a date. Shit, you just might want to have sex, you know what I mean? Or you just might want dinner and, and, and small talk to see how the person acts, you know? Some people like to play hard to get. That's them. Um, some people like to get straightforward, um, straightforward to the point. That's other people. And that's fine. However, at times, like, when you feel in your gut, uh, she didn't understand the red flags because he already solidified and kind of um, used the tire as a totem, right? Then segueing into the totem to that conversation of a family because he wanted to mimic his parents' successful marriage of 40-plus years of marriage, right? So that's a lot to handle in one date, by the way. Part two. Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went... Which can be beneficial to you if you have friends with benefits. I'm just letting you know so that you guys can feel for each other and perhaps maybe a relationship does develop. That's for some people, not all people, by the way. Well, we laughed, we joked, we talked about people, which... Um, it's important <laughs> to you? Kind of up my alley, my okay. sense of humor. Mm -hmm. it, was just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat... What kind of people? Like celebrities, like pop culture, or like your everyday people? Because like, y'all don't have mutual friends, right? His car, and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song, but it's well. Mm. By the time this video posts, I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about, I think I met my wife tonight. And I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my God. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight. Okay. So during this conversation, he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there, he went to San Diego State, he played football for San Diego State, um, he talked about how, you know, life, he loved it out there, so he stayed, um, that's when he joined the company, um, and then he explained that he also did arena football, but only did it for about two or three years. He claims that while he was doing arena football, the team that he was on won a championship. But again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was like, okay, I didn't know that they had championships. And he was like, you know, he got a little offended, like, yeah, they got championships. And, you know, he was on that team. So he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked... Um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those, it's like when I tell people Okay, so I need to know what arena football is. The arena football leagues AFL can refer to one or three successive uh, professional in indoor American football leagues in the United States. Okay. So it's indoor football. Whatever that means. I used to work at Amazon. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. A lot. So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. Okay. He's not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when I know that I were asked a lot. That's why I asked him. I was asking questions about the business. I was trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship? 
relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time somebody I worked with. That will come back later. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking and talking and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, I don't even, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue Oops. was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at his place, which he had like a studio type of situation. Like it clearly, where he was staying um, wow. I was like it's like a studio apartment but he kept telling me like this is temporary because I'm looking That's suspicious. But I'm sure that he has a, another concocted excuse or explanation for why he's in the studio. For a house, like he showed me. He showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company, where she was out on maternity leave, but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a townhome or a single family house. So I was just like, okay, this is definitely temporary. Like he's not trying to right stay here. Right, time. right. And she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry, you know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't, da 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 da, da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I read it. I read the email. Um, so the decision was, are you, we going to quarantine at the studio? Or are we, gonna we are 20. Where is she driving to? Where is she going? Where is she driving to? Quarantine in my house. First mistake I made. Well, there's a lot, but this was a mistake I made. So okay. ladies, caution moment. During one of our dates, because um, keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Um, nothing physical or anything like that. Just two people who were who I thought were really on some. All right, let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something. He came to my house. When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom. What did I say? He was in a studio. Now, I'm telling you guys. Three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, townhome. Is that luxury to you guys? All of this in in order of how it happened. So some, t some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. And I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh, shit, she's a keeper. She got this three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bad townhouse, mm -hmm. and I'm in, like, a little studio. <laughs> yeah, let me, let, me, let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine. Right. Mm. The decision was made quarantine at my house. Okay, so a lot of times, too, when it comes down to uh, people um, seeing your luxuries, uh, a lot of the Pathfinders, too, would bring in people into their lives where 
they would kind of leech and especially during COVID season and I always get these concierge messages from them saying like you know like I don't think that this is the right thing for me right now uh, I need to um, be by myself or they kind of like thought about themselves and then or they thought about the situations like okay oh my god I'm moving way too fast we're not married yet he's already I feel like he's already moving in you know it's more than just a toothbrush in the bathroom now it's like his silverware his he bought his plates he you know <laughs> who I'm talking about um he bought his plates he bought his mug his carrig um his uh magic bullet ninja whatever it may be and you're in this predicament now and this predicament is having this person in your home right and a lot of times too once you let that love into your life you tricked yourself saying oh my god this is love i don't need any more manifestations my manifestations is already um has already manifested because I found this partner. The partner is in my home right now. But perhaps maybe that's not the right partner for you to be in your home uh, to establish a home relationship. You should definitely reassess um, and, and really like step outside your home and see, literally just, just go outside your house and see what the changes are, right? There's two cars now in the driveway or on the streets, right? There's more mail in the mailbox, and now you're responsible for the mail. You're responsible for the yard work. He's responsible for the yard work, or whoever it may be. Are they doing it? You know what I mean? Um, are they paying for the bills, whatever bills I need help with for a prolonged period of, period of time? COVID was three to four years plus, so you need to know that if they're going to bring something to the table and a lot of the pathfinders when you guys told me that they didn't bring anything to the table but liquor weed and bitches this is why we let these men get away these people get away with a lot of things and we enable it because we are so alone we are so alone we loathe love loathe love we want love right so much so that we kind of like erase all of our other goals that we need to manifest because you already thought that you manifested this big thing called love well, what about your own power what about your own business what about your own independence you, you, did you manifest that yet well technically no because you're not married yet you didn't i'm, I'm, I'm not saying marriage is for everybody but i'm saying that that re, that type of conversation of solidifying the relationship is just too early in my opinion. Don't live with a guy unless he was your husband. And yeah. you living with a dude and he ain't your husband, like <laughs> it was it was a struggle for me. Mm. Because I knew better. And I, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up, it was like, We may come for you. Right I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want but also, like, I'm not trying to, like, like make it so that you guys feel stupid or anything like that. I dealt with that before, um, and I internalized things, and I wish I had as much courage as she to kind of, like, say all of that. You know what I mean? Um, and she has true grit. I feel as if, like, there's going to be a lot of onions being peeled in her life. Um, and... You know, to my Christo practitioners or to my Abrahamic believers, the Bible believers, and every everyone who um, believes in God and everything, um, tend to stick to your goals with God and say, oh, maybe this is not the guy that he is intending me to, to, to meet, by the way. Go back to your spirituality and see if the person is, you know going to match your religious path or your spiritual path. So, there we go. Um, so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars. Um, he paid the utility bills and on 
And so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Um, <laughs> and so he paid, he paid all the house. In, in my defense for you, Risa Tisa, not more money than you. I'm listening, I'm, I'm giving your kudos, by the way. He's not like you. He, he, whew, you're high echelon. Bill, so my check really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. And I am not, this is where it's not going to make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. It's addictive. It is addictive, um, but also it is a plant and payoff for him. I'll tell you why. Let's go back to the tire situation, all right? That fucking tire literally was the segue for him to pay the major, not major, well, yeah, majority of the bills, right? Instead of her car and her cell phone and other things, um, who wouldn't get high off of that? And so, You don't have to worry right now. Like he's he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes because this was still March. So we're living together, and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning. He's helping to cook and clean, and then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him, or is he going to buy a house? where it's for us because we are going to try to make this thing work be official get married okay so you want she wants to make it work and get married and everything the fault on that is on you too because marriage takes two to decide on if you guys are going to get married or not so i guess she was dumbfounded and 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 was on that high you know, the, the, the honeymoon stage in ways of a relationship. Um, uh, a lot of the Pathfinders, too, like, during that time, a lot of them were buying homes, too, because they manifested the homes through the Pathfinder program. And I started to notice a, a lot of people were coming to their homes, uh, even in my sessions for pathfinders and things started to um like like the names being written into the deed or there was a gas bill or a water bill that's under their mate's name and legally he th once that happens legally uh for equal um housing opportunities and 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 legally he's paying for the bill so uh, men sometimes think, oh, do you want a gas bill to be paid for? Do you want an electric bill to be paid for your utilities? Once his name is on the bill and you try to kick him out, sometimes the sheriff or the police department can't because he's contributing to your rent, right? Um, and at times, too, there is a stipulation, too, where they're not on the lease, but they're paying for the the um, gas, electric, whatever utility bills that you have, and even for your rent, and sometimes there is a um, where everyone doesn't get what they want and they have to be kicked out because they breached the contract of having another person that's not on the lease living inside the house. So you guys might think it's karma. You guys might think it's a ricocheted curse or something like that. In reality, it is your doing. It is your doing. Learn from the Pathfinder's mistakes. Learn from my mistakes too because I had that happen before many many times so learn from our mistakes <laughs> fail so the question now on the table is what's the question what are we going to do because i didn't want to stay in um riverdale georgia i did not want to raise a family there i refuse what 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 what's wrong with riverdale georgia to have a baby uh, <laughs> so why i don't know i don't know why i'm not from georgia Let's look for a, for a, a family home 
for the two of us. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and Oh, we're this going to part three right now. Okay. Anyone in their right mind can show you paperwork. Anyone can embellish that paperwork too. Um, <clears throat> and anyone can make an email account um, and perhaps maybe incorporate under that email business address, right? So that's what I found out too with a lot of Pathfinders too that had these personalities uh and them dating them where their money wasn't where their mouth is basically let's see if this is the case with me a letter from chase with the chase logo at the top stating that he had been approved for a mortgage for excuse me for a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage or seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house so he was like we can't go over seven Um, not only that, to inflation, I think she's going to go into inflation during COVID as well because there was a halt on uh, real estate as well because, I mean, people, it was a financial crisis for the world, basically. And it's a great thing that she asked that question. Um, an interest rate, oh my God, like 700, 750,000 uh, interest rate went up. So a lot of the people who bought houses before um, the pa pandemic and uh, before um, the former president's administration, um, our interest rate is was one digit basically, and now it's like two digits. And I'm I'm really nervous with I'm I'm, I'm this is gonna be off topic right now, but I'm really nervous with um, real estate in in America. Um, and particularly um, in the East Coast, West Coast, and the s Southern. Like, I'm not, Midwest is fine, but, like, the where I grew up is East Coast, so, in D.C. So, for me, like, I'm seeing, like, a lot of rates going up. I'm seeing a lot of um, house being foreclosed in the neighborhood. I'm seeing a lot of people move out, moving to Texas, moving to Alaska, moving elsewhere outside of the country. Um, because cost of living in America is just so high and expensive and we just put up with it. Um, and there is going to be perhaps maybe a journey for, you know, me and Aldwin or, and the family too, uh, where we just, I honestly, you know, were, was, was haunting, you know, a lot of things because of America, because of what's going on in America and, you know, as an entrepreneur and a creative director and a designer, like, I have all these in my plates and there is no stipulations for me, um, especially for, you know, a person, uh, especially for a particular, you know, tax bracket and a particular demographic, too. It's getting very, very expensive. And even the wealthy people are complaining about it because sometimes when people work for their retirement it's everything that they work for and they're successful because they accumulated six figures or even millions from shares bonds and everything right that they want to go elsewhere um and i'm saying this too guys like i feel as if um soon and you know my beings can tell me this by 2030, y'all need to make your mind up if you guys want to be in America. I'm letting you guys know that right now. 2030. I'm not saying that as a spiritual advisor or a life coach. I'm not financial. I'm not a financial coach whatsoever. I don't have anything like that. But I am a consumer. I am a citizen. And I pay taxes. And seeing all of these things that are going on in America is just very horrifying because like we don't know I, I honestly honestly when she asked that question 
a lot of people get offended because they're like, oh, you know, I can afford it. A man, ma- men, a lot of men get offended. A lot masculine energies, y'all get offended um, when someone asks you those types of questions because you don't want to be challenged. Your alpha or your fire sign, whatever it is, um, is combating, you know, that question. Because you're asking that same question too. Can I afford this? Right? A lot of times we just have to think outside America. We have to think outside our comfort zone. I know that my comfort zone is America. Like, like my, my, my home is America. My home is d- the DNV. But I know that I can't raise children here. And a lot of people are saying that as well. Not only that, I cannot sustain life. We, a lot of people are like, I cannot sustain life in America. And this is coming from wealthy conservative people as well. Where they are seeing that, okay, well, maybe I was part of the wrong bandwagon. Um, because, you know, nothing is being done right now. Not Trump's administration, not Biden's administration. And that's my opinion right there. So what do we do? We, we can't be sheep, right? So we have to literally think outside the box. And not only that, like, America, we... Uh, I like to pride America with, like, our freedoms and everything. But it's it's getting to a point where it's like selective this freedom and i'm seeing this and 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 and, and people are telling me about this especially minority people and uh people of color and 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 people of pagan worshiping and and, and people who don't think the abrahamic beliefs and under god they don't want to be here anymore and a lot of the conservatives like well just get out get the fuck out right once we leave and once your resources are gone because a lot of times you need diverse thinking to have these resources in America. You guys are going to be fucked. Fucked beyond belief. Um, There's something that's brewing in America. And I don't even have to tell you guys that right now. Spiritually, it's 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 in the news. It's, 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 you think we are not in a war right now? Keep on thinking that way. Just keep on thinking that way. Um, and... It might be a demographic thing too, but what I'm seeing, you know, when I go out on the streets and what what I'm seeing, like people protest and when when I'm seeing um, the bigotry and the racism and and stupid shit like that, I'm seeing that no one wants to change. I'm seeing that these these personalities don't want to change. What happens when they don't want to change? Well, they can die. Like, they will. Like, like that... I think ignorance can, it can't be a bliss sometimes. It You really have to think. And people in D.C. are thinking, and, and especially in Maryland, too. Like, where, you know, we pay our taxes. We have taxes on bags. We have... And, and, and that was successful, apparently, in Montgomery County. But you're asking for more money. Where is that money going? A modern library, just one modern library in Silver Spring that's redid. An updated, one updated firehouse for two decades. You just updated one firehouse. You added bike lanes. He didn't own a home. So a lot of times banks would give you give first time homeowners a big ass loan with a high interest rate. Uh, because the people the bank wants that home if you can't pay it off, by the way. I'm listening you guys know. Once your house goes in the bank wants your house to be foreclosed so that they can sell it to the next highest payer. Uh, and they can update it themselves and things of that nature. Just letting you guys know. Was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank, he had an account with U.S. Bank, and he had 
No, I did not physically see the savings account. Well, you guys aren't married, and you guys didn't establish that yet. You guys are too early in a relationship to see a fucking savings account. The offshore account, I was like, why? He explained something about, oh, the U.S. <coughs> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Well, no, not necessarily, because if you make money with that money in America, it's always going to be taxed. Y'all. Offshore or not. Look, I live paycheck to paycheck. I, again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. I said, so you have... So I have a Thai National Bank account. Um, I do have a Chinese bank account as well. I'm not Chinese, but um, I do have a Chinese bank account. I do have multiple passports as well because... Um, uh, I have actually, no, 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 I only have two. No, getting two, um, with solidifying, um, in the future, somewhere that I want to, uh, that we're going to be showing you, I guess, I guess the cat's out of the bag, right? Because we're talking about, um, home, homes and things of that nature too, so, um, it's going to be a journey. Um, it's just in the talks of us. Um, it's just the talks for for now. We are okay in where we are right now. We, we we're more we're more than fine. Um, it's just like the politics of things. I don't know if you guys um, I I I know that in some states like you guys there's like a lot of like political talk and and everything because of course like election and and shit like that. But um. There, it, it's 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 just we want to be safe, and we want to have shelter. That's all. So you have the money um, to pay for to pay for a home. I'm also holding in my hand a letter from Chase saying that he was approved for seven hundred fifty thousand. So I went off of what I saw. So we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man. Like from the paperwork. 
work I saw, it was right. like Jesus' name. Right. So he um, he called him. I guess they talked. I was not there, um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming, my ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved, and <clears throat> they are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put down, I believe, 5000 He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like... Well, not only that, too. Like, um, I think he was banking on you to put your employment um, stuff in there, too. Um, Ernest, I think he was trying to put in, like, the down payments and the fees and, and everything else and which was this is actually bad he's thinking about you being an employer so the house is under both of your names but you are the main breadwinner okay great he was like so realistically this is april we should be able to get in that house um by june okay no problem so this is what he told me about three or four days later I get a phone call from the re from the realtor, and the realtor is like, "Hey, I'm just checking to see." Oh, because he didn't want to say that he didn't make that much money because he's gonna they're gonna see how much money that he made um, through payroll, because you still need to pay for the mortgage. It's not like you're buying out in cash, so they need to know if you can pay for this because then now the bank doesn't want a liability if you can't pay for it. The liability is going like like the collateral in ways would be Risa Tisa. What you know? What you guys want to do about that house? So I was confused. I'm at work, um, and I said, "Oh, I I was told that he put an offer in," and the realtor was like, "He did? I didn't know that he put an offer in," and I said, "Well." Why wouldn't you know? Like, he told me he put the offer in, and he um, he had paid earnest money, $5,000 earnest money. And so the realtor was like, well, let me call him and find out what's going on with that, because I didn't know anything about it. So red flag, of course. So I call him, and, he's, and he, in true narcissistic nature, he flips this... Okay. Um, I have to say, because Aldwin and my father had to deal with the paperwork, so I don't know what earnest money is. Um, technically, according to... Okay, so this is Marilyn. Um, what is the point of earnest money? Earnest... Okay, now, I, I found the general one. Earnest money, um, or good faith deposit, uh, is a sum of money you put to demonstrate your seriousness of buying a home. Um, in most cases, the earnest money acts as deposit of the property you're looking to buy. So, does it take away from the the house buy uh, the, the house like payment, like how much the pro um, house cost, guys? If you kind of can write it in the description box below, or um, is it just for that loan so that it could be modified for like an extent extended month, or it does that not count too? Whoever is in real estate, let me know, because I am actually confused on what earnest pay is. I don't think we um, gave them earnest pay because we never, I never heard of earnest pay. Um, um, I did get like like pay stubs because they need to know the the or like if you're an entrepreneur, they have to see how much is coming in with your business because uh, we were doing payroll and then we were doing entrepreneur as well. And they saw the money was coming in on both ends, so that's how we got the home. Like, earnest pay. I never heard of earnest pay. Is it always, do they always say that? Is it for when people, like, is earnest pay, like, for people who, is it, is it granted for everybody? Or is it for people who they know, realtors know, and the bank knows that, hey, you don't make that much, but can you send, like, here, here's the thing, can you put at least t uh, five to $10,000 down, right? Is it like that? Let me know. And he, like, goes off. 
he's like cussing going off like he shouldn't excuse me I have the hiccups he shouldn't be calling you if he has a question he should call me because I'm the one that's on the mortgage he was like and now it's you know it's gonna be an issue and I said well did you put the offer in with him or not and he said no I did not put the offer in with him I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor so I can give him the business what? So, I never, heard, I did not hear from that realtor again. So I was just like, confused. Is the house under contract or is it not? He was like, yes, the house is under contract. This is this is how crazy things work out. About three days later, on Realtor.com, I'm looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm gonna decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So, show my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. <gasps> okay, okay. So, so when a house is under contract, anyone can buy the house. The reason why it's like under contract is because I think anything can fall through. But there was an offer Ernie made, and maybe a check cleared, or two check clears, or maybe the whole check like, cleared. Did you not believe me? And I ain't had the heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it's not too good to be true. Yeah. Um, but once I saw the house was under contract, I absolutely believed that, okay, this is under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Um, and so we had driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, the family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he was like, I want us to start looking for furniture so that way we can go ahead and order it so when, when it's time to move, the furniture is ready. Yeah, I don't, did they get the house? I don't think so. But, um, oof. Was he nervous about it? Do you think like, we had to get furniture or whatever? How? And then do you think he was internalizing it too, like in the, dr in the car drive or in on like where he was like, how am I going to do this? You know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it. As I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I know a lot of um, people who trap and people who uh, don't have the cleanest record and people who uh, need help getting a home by their significant other. And it works. They're in love with each other and everything. But that started out with honesty, by the way. It started out with honesty. I feel as if when he if he was honest with her, she's a really faithful girl. I think that the relationship would have been different when it came to buying a home. Because now the talks is if you guys establish that relationship, oh babe, this is Tessa Rissa. I see that there's a lot of shit going on in your life. Let me write the house to me because the, it's I'm earning the money for the house. Let I, 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 even if you know what's going on, try not to like tell that, per like, but even if the person is really, really trying or just bullshitting, right? Um, in this case, if the person is trying, um, and you're seeing them try, you're seeing them work hard, and you're seeing, okay, well, maybe, you know, there's not so much truth to what he is saying, and you want this relationship because you're seeing that this person is going to better it off them lives, then their house should be written under your name because now it's your responsibility. Because you have that work record. You have that. I don't know if she was working at the time, but um, I know a lot of Uber drivers and um, task taskers and drive carriers, door dashers, who bought their first home during COVID by making all that money by drive sharing. So, um, and they can buy a house for that because it is uh, income and it's taxed. Uh, like, he was, he was very methodical in planning and saying, this is what we need to do. So we started going to Home, home Depot, Lowe's, um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliance. Home Depot, so you're getting appliances and what, windows and stuff? He had a printout. Mm. Let me be clear. He had a printout. So it said on there that they were going to take the appliances. 
So we needed to get a new stove. Okay. Um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. So we went to Home Depot and Lowe's, and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances, and here's where we get into the shopping. I already, I already know what's going to go on. Let me... May comes and obviously... Oh, May comes now. Hold on. So, April... I didn't think anything of it because, again, I saw all these things that I wanted. Again, he's taking pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. I don't think. It was like, oh, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had caught COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody crazy. And I, it was some something just made, I would just start talking about what's on my mind. So I was like, in, in May, of, he's like, he's like 15 done in space. So April turns into May. May 2020 comes. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, well, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had caught COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody else. Mm. And he's like, he's like 15 houses backed up, so it'll be a while. So at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May of 2020, I started recording um, audio diaries. I don't know why. I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts in, a, in an audio diary and I still have them and I would I would save them by the date and um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind so I was like I knew I knew there was something under contract to myself why would he lie about that this is so easy to verify why would he lie about that? Have you caught him in any other lie? And if it actually does what he's supposed to do? Like, I, I around mid-May, I found out I was pregnant. May 2020. When I found out I was pregnant, he was ecstatic, and I was like, oh, shit. The reason why I was oh, shit is because, number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was... I, I felt like it was probably going to be a high-risk pregnancy. Um, and I wasn't married. And that nagged. I cannot tell y'all how much it nagged me. There was a lot of internal <coughs> struggle in between. My family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point. I told them, you know, that I was pregnant, um, went to the doctor. Everything looked good. Um but again, because it was COVID, he couldn't go in with me um, into the actual room. So, you know, doing any sort of ultrasound, doing the blood test, because my HCG levels were really high. So the doctor was like, hey, it might be twins. We don't know yet. Um, we're still kind of early, you know, along. Um, they gave me a due date. Due date was January 26th of 2021. Um, so... pregnant so there was now more of a push into we got to get a house we got to find out what's going on with this house and so he was very he was on top of it he had an answer for everything um he was like you know i'm gonna call and find out what's going on blah 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 um he then magically told me about a week later oh they're going to do inspection on the on the house like in two days so I was just like, okay, keep her back, then we will know what, you know, I guess they did an inspection. He showed me an inspection report. Um, 
only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced, which he I remember he was very happy about. Then he said that we told me it was going to be a virtual closing where um, you wouldn't. And so anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've done it enough in my life. I hate moving. But I did not start. So men like this will procrastinate the shit out of any deal um when they know that they don't have anything i know that i was like played a lot too like with like friends like okay do you have this item that i told you you're having do you do um especially like when i was growing up too like i i think um people were like trying to like like verse like where their upbringing what um are and things of that nature so like you know they would make like all this excuse of why they don't have this particular item or a particular home and they would make up all these excuses and all these excuses and then you know when the divine gives you the delivery and that's a baby it's it's scary it's it's scary for a lot of people packing up that house at all i was just like you know i'm pregnant my body was changing so fast mm -hmm. that it was like i could barely keep my eyes open half the day um and so no i didn't start a relationship i don't why would he lie about this like who makes up that they're buying a house when in fact they're not mm -hmm. and then he's showing you all this paperwork like come on you can't be that jaded that you don't right. even believe what's in I'm just fast forwarding this guys because like it is four hours like, let me just um around June 5th I looked at the house again on realtor.com I don't know what made me do it other than and I don't mean to sound super spiritual I know that people are like you know you may or may not believe in God but I'm telling you I believe with all my heart probably the Holy Spirit was like look at that house on realtor.com so I looked at the house on Realtor.com. This was around June 5th. It showed that the house was off the market. And I remember being like, okay, wait, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because ex-husband is telling me we're about to close on the house. We're about to close. It's our house. We got furniture, da 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 um, He's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently is completely out of the picture. But again, I was not heavily involved. So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market for the seller. I don't remember her name. I called her. And I said, you know, my, <clears throat> excuse me, I said, my husband and I, even though I wasn't married, my husband and I were looking at this house at 123 Main Street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Or, you know, I, I pulled that card. And she was like, oh, no, ma'am. Um, the home closed yesterday. It closed June 4th. Again, there are certain dates I just remember. Um, wow. And I said, oh, it closed June 4th? I was like, really? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and she said, yes, ma'am. She was like, um, my, my sellers sold the house. And I was like, oh, man, okay. Well, I said, my husband and I really want to, you know, we love the pictures of it. And we're getting ready to start a family, so I would have loved to have been able to, you know, have the opportunity to see it. I asked her something. 
I don't remember the specific question I asked her. And I don't even, I, I know why I asked the question because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. So I asked her something about the buyers. And I remember, I, and somehow, again, forgive me, I don't remember the question I asked her. But the answer was that it was an older white couple. Older white couple. So I get off the phone with her. I record an audio diary, and in the audio diary, I specifically say, okay, there is no house. He's going to have to get out of this lie somehow. Because now <laughs> I realize, yeah. at the very least, yeah. he was lying about um, him being the one who was under contract. I knew enough. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. I want to know how that okay. went. So I was like, I literally said in that audio diary, okay. you're about to have a baby with bullshit. Most women, and he said, some bullshit. No appliances. He said it was so calm. And he was like, oh, interest rate. I said, you know what? If it, because something's going on. And he said, he came home. He didn't really say anything that day. The next day I asked him about. Oh, so that day he didn't say anything when he came back home. So the next day, okay. House. Which, what, June 6th? And he said, my friend, the realtor, um, he was like, I'm talking to him because something's going on with the interest rate. And when he said that, so much relief because I knew that I had been prepared for he's going to give me some bullshit so when he said there's something with the interest rate I said you know what If the int this is literally what I said y'all if the interest rate isn't good then we shouldn't move there we should probably let this house go we should cancel whatever furniture he's going to agree to that he's going to agree to that he's going to agree to that and let's just look for another house I said I would like to be moved before the end of the year. I said I really don't want to be nine months pregnant moving into a house. I would like I would like to be done with this before then. And he was he the way I said it was so calm and he was like, okay, he was like, I'm gonna call the friend, the realtor, and tell him I'm backing out of the house and I'm gonna see if I can get my earnest money back. And I remember looking at him, I was standing in the kitchen, and I cocked my head to the side, and I said, okay, get your earnest money back, and let's find another house. And so, that's how that first house fell through. So, um, fast forward, I'm looking, I keep looking at this to see how much time I have, because you know they only give you 10 minutes. So, how much do you bet his demeanor was? I don't, I don't, maybe she's not saying it, but, you know, some, oh, you really want this house. I'm so sorry. We can find another one. This is part five. Part six is coming up. But um, subsequently, what ends up happening the next week, which is mid-June, I was at work. Um, and I started cramping. Started bleeding. Um, and at this point, my doctor, I had just had an ultrasound earlier that day. So I went to work because the ultrasound was, was fine. I went to work and the cramping and the bleeding started. And I started crying because I, I kind of knew what was going on. And um, my doctor had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound, they did not see a heartbeat. So she was like, this pregnancy is not gonna be viable. So I'm crying and hysterical, and now we're gonna get into part six. Whoa. Okay, so this is- Ooh, new environment, I love that. Oh my God, way to, 
change the scenery and just like break it off to us. Oh my goodness. where we left off so obviously um my doctor had called and told me there was no heartbeat the pregnancy was not viable at that point and i was cramping and spotting at work went into my best friend's office and immediately started crying she was like what's going on and i said um i told her what the doctor said and she grabbed her keys grabbed her purse and was like let's go i'm taking you home oh on my way home, I called my boyfriend and told him what the doctor said. And he was like, I'll meet you at home. So he was coming from Duluth, went straight home. Um, and so about 24, 48 hours later, I had a doctor's appointment. And my doctor gave me three options. First option, let everything happen naturally. Your body will expel the fetus on its own. Second option. You can take a pill, which will induce expelling the fetus at home. And the pill basically will cause you to contract and expel. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. I did not want to do a DNC because I did not want to be in a hospital with COVID going on. Um, and for whatever reason, I did not do the option of let it happen naturally. So I chose to do the pill. His birthday was um, June 17th, my ex's boyfriend, excuse me, my ex's birthday was June 17th, so the decision was made, we're going to celebrate his birthday that day, go out to eat, um, and then that night I would take the pill, because we both were off from work the next two days, next two or three days. So, um, went out to eat, to try to celebrate as best we could, and then took the pill that night. That night was the most traumatic, excruciating pain I've ever put my body through. Um, I do not recommend any woman, if prayerfully you don't have to go through that, but I don't recommend taking that pill. If you don't have to, don't do it. Um, I, st I spent the whole night in the bathroom just crying in so much pain. I couldn't take, they gave me a narcotic. I couldn't take it because it was, I found out I was allergic to it. So it was causing me to like projectile vomiting. And wow. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Um, Risa Tisa. Way to go song. <laughs> but um, wow. Like it, it was just, you know, like when someone brings in drama and then they bring something so solemn, like it just, it just gets solemn. I don't know how else to say it was like take me is up for a promotion he's up to he's up to be promoted to vp because of this the president of the company <coughs> excuse me is coming in and it was going to be this huge business meeting he had to go to you there's no way you can do that meeting like i need you to take me to the hospital and all this other stuff and so he offered to have his sister take me to the hospital um apparently his sister lived in douglasville i was like no because i've never met her like i'm not i know i'm not having a stranger take me to the hospital no this is a private situation i don't want to do that blah 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 so my aunt was going to had offered to take me and then my friend who took me home from work had offered to take me so at that point um, we get into an argument because he's like, my sister is, you know, you, you about your family. So why can't she step in? And I was like, no, nah, because I don't know her period. I don't know her. So, so my friend offers to take me to the hospital because I was all distressed that he's saying he has a business meeting and he can't take me. So I remember being on I-75 on the connector on the phone with her crying because I was, I was so embarrassed that he wasn't going to be the one to take me and that I was needing to rely on someone else to take me to the hospital in order to get a DNC done. And she was really great. She was like, girl, this is why you have a village. Like, it's okay. Things happen. The world is crazy right now. 
I will take you. You're going to be okay. So he did not take me to the hospital um, for my DNC. Wow. My friend did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Um, so when they wheeled me into pre-op after I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. They're going to get me prepared to go back um, to the surgical ward or whatever. And the response I got was from his new executive assistant named David. Now, when he told me he was up for the promotion, he did tell me that part of getting this new job would be that he would get an executive uh, executive assistant named David. And he did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform David, if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, pull me out of the meeting. Because, you know, she's, my fiance's having um, a procedure done and response. He said, yeah, Mr. Blah Blah told me that um, you are having a procedure done. If you need me to get him, I can go get him. He's in a meeting. Just let me know what you need. And I just said, no, don't bother him. I'm just giving an update that they're about to take me back. And David responds and says, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. So I have the procedure. I wake up and I am now in recovery. I should be in recovery 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. I wake up. First thing I ask, and I remember asking, is where is so-and-so? The nurse who was so sweet, you know, she was like, everything went well. Um, You're doing great. She said, we spoke to your fiancé. He's on his way. So... I said, okay, you know, okay, I kind of dozed back out, but I could still hear everything that was going on. I just could not keep my eyes open to save my life. So I hear her talk to the other nurse, and that's when she said, yeah, um, Dr. So-and-so called her fiancé, and his executive assistant picked up. And the executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting and that, um, you know, you could relate to him what you need to say, and he'll, you know, tell Mr he'll tell the fiance and my doctor was like hell no (laughs) HIPAA um I need to speak to him exactly so apparently my fiance called the doctor back about 30 minutes later and the doctor informed him she'll be ready to be discharged in about an hour you know you can make your way and come pick her up he said he was on his way He was on his way from Duluth to Atlanta, which is not a huge distance, but the time of day, one thing about Atlanta, there's always traffic. So, he should have been there within the hour. I should have only been in recovery an hour and a half. Let's go to the next part. Okay, so... Let's see if I can sync it to... Okay, so it's I'm gonna I'm gonna just assess it because there's it's just so long and I I can only have so much time in the day to to cover this. Um, I did hear from my peers and I, I try to tell them not to tell me about um what's going on with with who the fuck did I marry video uh, Risa Tisa's video on TikTok. But there is some things that I uh, do want to tell everyone on this live is is that when when you don't when you feel as if you you're not of value other people may see that you are of value and know that you don't think that you are valuable for the world so um they'll make you feel special in any type of way in order for you for them to get that taste of success or that taste of uh whatever is going on in your life in this case i wouldn't want to say that um he went in there for you know like like marriage or anything like that because she didn't have products of her own but she did have assets or she did have um you know a rental for the town home and it as if he didn't have that before or he wanted that type of um a modern convenience that it, it, it feels as if he never had it before you know what i mean 
and with like her explaining to uh, to us about you know how he rolls and and other things too it's just when I say Pathfinders deal with this on a basis, especially the ones who, you know, as- wants to establish, like, marriage and everything, um, they tend to fall back from what I say, and they tend to already, uh, they're, they tend to already be inside that relationship that they know that they shouldn't have be- been, been in and part of, you know? And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, people in between, it takes another person to reel you back into reality. And if a person is stating that, then that person is your friend, by the way. If a friend is not, you know, if a friend's preventing you to not marry the the significant other because they want them or because, um, you know, they're jealous, then that's a whole other situation. But in this case, like, I think... I really think that he was trying to hide everything from his past, like his sister and everything and his family members and, um, uh, in the beginning, because he doesn't want his lies to be caught up. Right. And sometimes like when a prime example for, for me, like I had like a lot of peer back in the day, I had a lot of peers that, you know, would try to one up me because of the vehicle that I was driving, you know, a luxury vehicle that I was driving or, uh, perhaps maybe it was the latest handbag that I was carrying, and the 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 gentleman knows what it is, and gentleman seems to, you know, say like, okay, well, if this person is has this stuff, I want to fuck her, or I want to be with her, you know, I want to put a baby in her because I can solidify me being a part of her life, so that maybe I can weasel my way inside of her or his or their lives, right? And it's really, really problematic. Learn from her lesson, guys. Look at her videos and learn from her because she's actually a really, really wise and knowledgeable teacher when it comes to this type of bullshit. Um, men and people in people in general are opportunists. A lot of people are opportunists, and you have to find out these all these red flags. Does it make sense what the person is saying? And not only that, especially if you're buying a house, like, you take the steps into buying your house, because that is your house, too. You take that responsibility. Don't give that responsibility to the next person, to, uh, to, to your partner, because it's a you situation now. It's not just him. It's not just her. It's not just your children. It's your decision as well. So... I know that this is like really long winded. I'm so sorry guys, but that is my take on, on who the fuck did I marry? And sometimes divination, like I said, like won't, can't really help. You just have to be 10 times smarter. Um, I'm going to have to say that you can use divination. You can get outside help, but why don't you use your power? Why don't you use your knowledge and, and your intellect and see these red flags and be like, including now, look at your marriage and see, are these, are, are there red flags? Am I happy? Are my kids happy? Um, and, 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 and see if his lifestyle is different than his family or, 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 or their, their lifestyle is different than home lifestyle. Because if you don't know a lot that's going on in your partner's life, like if they're, you know, going out with their friends and you never seen their friends or you never seen their family, then that's a red flag right there that you really have to let them go because it's very, very detrimental in y'all's relationship on what goes on, uh, on what's going on. Um, uh, when it comes down to an, a relation, when it comes down to someone in your personal circle, uh, personal bubble now, which is your home, because you don't want that personality to dictate your life, one, or um, stress out your life because the person is lying to you pathologically, and now it is a routine for them because the routine is him having all of these other backbones, Plan Bs, when he gets caught. And employers too, potential employers too. When you kind of see these, especially if you're in an admin or a managerial like like um, uh, position, you can utilize these types of personalities to to hire. 
You know, is his money where his mouth is? Are the resume currents? Can I call at least uh, two of his references and see if you know they say positive things? Can I do I can I get a business address? Can I get a business email for these references? You know what I mean? Is this person really skillful? Because when I hire him or her, will they? Will I have to be doing more of the teaching and tasking? You know, and then once that six months over, you can't really fire them because they didn't do any. I mean, you were the one that hired them. You're the one that thought that they had all these qualifications, and now you're fucked because this person is wasting your money now as an employer, or this person is wasting your money and time in the relationship while you could be doing whatever you plan to do or finding another mate and things of that nature. But with Tess. Tisa Risa, I applaud her for actually like stepping out of her comfort zone because she just had it. This woman right here like had it. She had it um, with the bullshit that he was doing, and I and I, I did see a lot too that he did a re rebuttal video on TikTok saying that everything is false. But she has the receipts. She has everything already. And I know, you know, I wish her the best. Of course, I wish her every, you know what? I wish her the world to her husband. She doesn't want, you know, negative strife, but I wish him the best in the most difficult way. Um, yeah, I, I wish his I wish him the best, and I wish, and his life is just going to be m ten times more difficult um, now since she's in the picture. Remember, girl, Tisa Risa, and other people who are like her, Pathfinders too. Y'all got the power. Y'all have the power in y'all's court, basically y'all's hand, and you really have to utilize that. Don't be naive. This is not the 1950s anymore where we have to get court sh uh, courtship from from um, men and, 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 and the wooing stage and shit like that. No, modern times, modern proportions, that's not what we do anymore. That's not what we do. Um, it's all about, in my, in my books, it's all about uh, if this person um, can help me in life and, and fulfill my lifestyle needs and wants as well as getting love in return, physically, emotionally, and mentally. And that is what marriage should be, in my opinions, you know, in my opinion. Um, and there's more too that I have, that, that I kind of, I, that I'm gonna be missing, but I'm gonna be watching this for entertainment and actually um, perhaps maybe I, I, you know, can reference this, uh, do another live stream on this for a part two, but I don't think I, I I don't think I should because I think we all get the gist of um, pathological liars and we get the gist of um, narcissism and a lot of times narcissists too see the pathfinders who are dating a narcissist in this situation as well uh, for you know starting a family or starting a home um, uh, a lot of times these pathological liars and these um, narcissists are just um, trying to are just trying to drain all of your financial wealth that you gained <coughs> <coughs> and sometimes they don't care about um, the love that you think they're providing for you hold on I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that he doesn't love her. You know what I mean? I don't want to say that. I don't know them. But if those four letter words is easy for a motherfucking narcissist to control you, they're going to be using that a lot. Um, just letting you guys know. So that's it. That's all I conclude with this. Um, there are different types of techniques and different, I guess, um, advice that I can give you guys to spiritually that can help you guys with this. Of course, do divination. 
um, and sometimes do a divination when you guys do do a full embodied search on your potential mate too. Um, perhaps like maybe the record is like you kind of iffy is like okay maybe sh um, you know like like maybe the record is like oh my god like like what did he do like why is this on his record right now let me just do a divination um, and see and perhaps maybe that divination is going to explain his excuse on why that is on there and it could be a good excuse as well you know it could it, it could be excusable but um just make sure that you know you stick to your gut and you stick to um your intuition and you uh, don't do that actually now because you can die from that too from crazy ass motherfucker just notice the red flags that she stated and that i stated on this live stream just know those red flags, and that is your way out. Um, another thing, too, is uh, a lot of times people get, like, um, succubus beings and vampiric beings and siren beings for this purpose of controlling a narcissist as well. And that is definitely vi vital to a lot of spirit keepers and a lot of spiritual practitioners. They will get these type of beings because they need to have their partner at bay. And I know a lot of you guys are like, well, it's going against their wills and everything. Um, you guys are in spirit keeping, especially if you guys get dark arts or black arts. Like, it's a left hand path type of thing. So if the keep, if your being is wanting to protect you and is doing all these things, it's tasked to do all that thing. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it's tasked to do that. Um, it's deed uh, spiritually, and if the being um, is, you know giving him a certain type of illness or maybe his employment is is horrible now because of what you did um because you know that the truth is that he's not or she's not the person that is telling you what their employment you know are then of course like you know let loose i know that the beings are gonna let loose on them because they're trying to protect you and a lot of times spirit keepers are usually um you know I, I feel like sometimes spirit keepers, um, they kind of like, they don't double down, you know, they just have excuses for people because they just loathe love and they're lonely. And this is why a lot of spirit keepers and a lot of spiritual practitioners are baroque and that are seeking love and are feeling lonely because your guys are getting fucking tools as people that are, that you're interested in relationship. These motherfuckers are not, sometimes they're not in there for love. They're in there because they're looking for a home in general. They're looking for a home so that they can think about what their next move is with you. But that next move, it might be a decade with, with, with you because, you know, they're a creature of habit. I know this for a fact that narcissists are a creature of, fa uh, of habit due to the fact that what she um, explained in all my other peers too he did a rebuttal video and he's not saying anything that he did wrong and in fact i don't know if we even know why he did a rebuttal video on that but um sometimes with in this situation too um you can do spiritual things for him not to do rebuttal so that you can kind of like end you know his line or end i guess um his peers and his following because the the reason why he did that is because he thinks that he had a following or he thinks that he is important than what she stated. You know what I mean? A narcissist will always think that. So you just have to see the keys and uh, you have to have to see the red flags and know when to leave a situation. I think that she was so, in my opinion, I think that she was so, um, you know, dumb in love basically i mean who who isn't sometimes too if you really like the person dumb in love young dumb and full of cum i guess and you know she let her loneliness and she let um a narcissist enter her life because she, the narcissist knew she was looking for a loved one in the christian facebook site and hinge and other things too because they matched so obviously it's stating the obvious captain obvious here like you know men are gonna say whatever to make you feel comfortable on these dating sites because they want to mate with you they want they want to start something with you and in the spiritual form like even in her crystal path 
um, she got signs, and you can't really neglect these signs. Because a sign from beyond is a red flag, too, that uh, a, a being is trying to, like, let you know, hey, you're not supposed to do this shit. I don't want this for you. And you don't want this for you. You just feel alone. Because when she was stating all this stuff, it, I, it felt as if she felt alone. That no one else would come in, in, in her life. But she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. And I feel that a lot of times, because she used it, too, a lot of times, especially females, um... They, they weaponize themselves and, and hurt their own feelings for, you know, um, calling them themselves, like, overweight and, and, and things are plus size and things of that nature um, and not being confident of being pregnant. No, being pregnant is a luxury. So what? So what if you look like a muffin? I wish I was in your position so I can eat whatever the fuck I want with no excuse and things of that nature, you know? And in this case, too, like... She had a miscarriage, and not to be the 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 bearer of bad news, but that's a sign right there. Don't you guys think that's a sign? Don't you think that's a halt right there? I'm not look look like whatever you know. She 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 she's a you know she believes in God and whatnot, but don't you think that's a sign too? I know it's it's solemn right there. I I know I you know I love Tisa Risa. I, I love her content. Um, I love the fact that she is honest and everything, but that is a sign. I feel like that was a sign not to fulfill any more relationships. I know that a lot of cultures consider that as an omen as well. And I don't want to remind, um, you know, uh, females about, about that, you know, if, if you guys did go through that. But it's something that maybe like for her i feel like he may weaponize that as well or that may come in the future um because he's doing a lot of things that he shouldn't be doing like oh shit like she did this video i shouldn't say anything you know she did go through two miscarriages i only have a dick and i can i only committed like you know the incision and stuff she had to go through the whole thing for some reason i feel that this David guy, too, is um, a figment of his imagination. Is he even real, uh, Risa Tisa? Is he even real? He feels like a figment of his own ma imagination. Um, I don't know. I look, when you buy a home, it's, it's you, especially f for a family, it's going to be a forever home for the time being until the kids turn 18 or empty nesters and things of that nature or you find a new home and things but um sometimes i have to let the pathfinder know is that what you really want a child right now or you just want love do you want love now and then get a child later because that talk of children and and, and things of that nature when you first talk to someone you know i guess if you don't want short talk and you want a child I guess go ahead and, and say it but it kind of makes it a little bit uncomfortable for a lot of people when you're that blunt, too. You know? <sighs> I don't know. Anyways, um, I hope you guys like this video. Um, and I'm going to conclude it on this video because I have the rest of this live to go to, too. And I don't have four hours to spare uh, for for Risa Tisas. However, I have four hours on my free time that I can watch this video. Anyways, if you guys like this types of videos, um, please hit that like button and subscribe too. If you guys um, want to put an in input on what you guys want the next stream to be, go ahead and, uh, and let us know too in the comment section below. And if you hate us, let us know too because, you know, every input, any review, any comment is taken into consideration um and we want to hear from you guys so we all we love you all so much for watching stay confident and fabulous and make the right decisions for your keep and your family